Yes. So finally, it's time for the baby to be born. And uh, Zechariah couldn't speak, okay, until this moment. When the baby was born, they asked, what shall we call it? And as the custom was, they would call the baby after uh, his or her, his, his father, not her father. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, and I presume, this guy says, the child will be named Zacharias after his father. His name is Zechariah, so the child will be Zechariah the second, right? No, 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 they say John. His name is to be John, says Elizabeth. John, why John? Well, because angel, the angel that appeared to Zechariah told him to name the baby John, and he would become uh, the all-known John the Baptist. But this guy says, there's no John in his family that I know of. Why would you call him John if there are no Johns in your family? You know, you should name your baby after somebody in the fam family, according to their custom and traditions at that time. Is there a John in yours? No. But he must be named John. Shouldn't you give him a good family name? People ask. No, no, no. I don't think I know anyone with that name. People say, Zacharias, what do you think of this? People say, and Zacharias is holding something in his hand. Looks like a pencil. And he's holding a hand out. And is there something on his hand? Did he write on his hand like you do when you want to cheat on a test? <laughs> People are like, someone, please get Zacharias a writing tablet. You know, they didn't have paper, but they had writing tablets. And so he starts to scribble. His name is John. Wow, what beautiful handwriting Zechariah has. <sighs> Much better than mine. Okay, that's what he said. Very well then. John it is. Ah, praise the Lord, says who? Says Zechariah, finally, at that moment, his mouth was opened up. The lock was unlocked, right, miraculously. And then he started speaking. And the first words came that came out of his mouth were, ah, praise the Lord. Probably, ah, I can speak again. No, I'm exaggerating. Uh, he said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, he says, finally. For he has redeemed his people. And you, my son, he speaks to baby John. You, my son, will be the Lord's prophet, preparing people for the Lord's salvation and forgiveness. And everyone in the area was filled with awe and talked about all that had happened with Zacharias and Elizabeth. It was a miracle. They got a baby in their old age. Plus, you know, Zechariah couldn't speak until the fulfillment of the promise that angel gave him. Because he didn't believe he was speechless for nine months and a couple more weeks, right? Uh, let's let's read now. It's your turn to read. We have a few hands up. Hitash, your hands up. Can you read the first part? Zechariah is speechless. Okay, sir. Zechariah is speechless. While Zechariah was busy in the temple, the angel... Gabriel appeared to him and told him that his wife would have a son, but because Zechariah was told and his wife could not have children, he doubted the angel's words. Then the angel said to him, because you have not believed what I have told you, you shall not be able to speak until this promise comes through. The people outside the temple were wondering why Zechariah was taking so long. When he eventually came out, he couldn't speak. So he made signs with his hand to explain what had happened to him. That's right. <clears throat> because he did not believe what the angel told him, he was not able to speak until that promise came true. The question is, what is faith it's not face it's faith you have to stick your tongue out for th sound faith just just like look at me faith see that's the th sound i know i told you a billion times and some of you're like not again hey. but it's okay <laughs> uh it. will you read about faith okay how would you have felt if you were Zechariah, having exciting news to share, yet not being able to speak? 
Zachariah had been praying for a son for a, for a long time. Now that his prayer has been answered, Zachariah doubted, even though an angel had given, given him the good news. What happened to his faith? Zachariah may have been praying the same, year, same prayer year after year, but he had lost hope and no longer expected God to answer. Is praying for the impossible not a way we show our faith? True faith is kept alive by hope. Faith in God is trusting and depending on the Lord completely, believing in his power and relying on his faithfulness. The Bible puts it this way. Now faith is being sure of what we can we what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Hebrews eleven one. Have you wanted to ask God for something? But because it seems impossible, you have never prayed about it. Or have you prayed but not really expected an answer? Ask God, and if it pleases Him to give you what you have asked for, the answer to your prayer will come at the right time. Yes, sometimes it's really difficult having the faith, right? Let's read the Bible verse uh, first together. Ready, go. But when he asked, he, he must believe and not down, because he was down like a wave of blown and tossed down. by the wind. James 1 6. Yeah, sometimes having faith is really difficult, and believing in the miracle is not easy, is it? Once, once upon a time, I knew of a person who lost a baby, their baby died. And, you know, we know that God can resurrect people. And so I wanted to pray for the baby, uh, knowing that God is all powerful to be resurrected, for example. Wouldn't that be awesome if baby becomes alive again and parents are happy and everybody's happy? But we know that it's going to be uh, an awesome miracle, right? And it's not something that happens usually. Dead people usually stay dead. That people do not become alive. And having that kind of a faith that makes the baby become alive, I don't think it's it's very common. I think it's almost impossible for us as human beings. Um, I prayed for it, but the baby still stayed dead. The baby did not become alive. I guess I'm not Jesus, right? Jesus was the one who prayed for uh, dead people and they be became alive. I'm just saying that having a faith that can move the mountains and that can raise people to life again, that's not easy. That's difficult. That's what uh, the Bible says. It says that if we have faith, we can move the mountains. The important thing is not to doubt. Well, what do you think? Do you think we should pray for dead people to be to become alive again mm. no why not no. why not what if god answers but because you didn't pray he doesn't oh. well they're not going to be like zombies right when, when people that Jesus prayed for who became alive again, they weren't zombies, right? They weren't ah, brain, ah. they weren't eating brain. <laughs> they be became alive like, like normal human beings. And Elijah, remember in the Old Testament, we talked about Elijah and he prayed for a boy who had a, a headache and died. He prayed for him and he became alive again. It happens here and there a few times. It doesn't happen too often. Even in the Bible, it's only mentioned a few times when people were resurrected. Mostly Jesus did it. Lazarus, his friend, Mary's brother, he died and he stayed in the, inside the tomb for a few days and Jesus prayed and he became alive. Well, whether God answers or not, whether it happens or not around us, we know that. When Jesus comes back, we're all, everybody who dies, they would become alive and we will be forever in heaven with God. It's going to be the great resurrection. 
How do we know? Well, because Jesus himself, he gave us an example. He died and he rose again in three days. And that's what we celebrate. Our faith is built on Jesus. He's our foundation. And because he died and rose again, we know that we will also rise again after our death. Death is inevitable. I mean, all those people who became alive, right? Those people who died, then they prayed for them and they became alive. They died again the second time. Nobody stayed alive forever, right? So the death is not something we can conquer in this world. We will all die. But this is not the final death. It's just the beginning of the story. It's the prelude or let's call it intro or let's call it um, a preface. You know, in the book, you open the book and there's a preface there. <laughs> this is what it is. Our life on earth is just a prelude or preface or intro or appetizer to the eternal life that we will have in heaven. We know that this is not the end. It's just the beginning. And that's why the death here on this earth doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter whether you live uh, one year or 10 years or 100 years. Compared to the eternity, it's all like a moment, like one second. 100 years compared to the eternity. Eternity means never, ever ending. It's 100 years to the 100,000th thousand power. I mean, let's talk about this way. Uh, imagine desert. Imagine a huge desert. The desert that covers the entire world. Imagine a little bird. That little bird comes to the earth picks up one uh, grain of sand and flies to the moon. It takes the bird 100 years to fly to the moon, 100 years to come back. It leaves the, that grain of sand on the moon. Then it comes back, takes another grain of sand and flies to the moon. How long will it take for the birds to take all the sand from the earth to the moon? <laughs> and that's just the beginning oh, yeah. of the eternity. It's still a very small fraction of the eternity. Because eternity is never ending. And that doesn't, doesn't matter how much we live here on earth. Compared to the eternity, it's nothing. It's just a fraction of a second. That's why death doesn't matter. Because it's just the beginning. The first letter of the preface in the book. Just the first letter. Or one dot inside that letter. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm talking too much. <laughs> 